There are many great ham radio and electronic deals to be had on AliExpress and we're going to explore some of those in this video today. All of the products that I show in this video today are linked in the description below. If you do use those links, they are affiliate and they do help the channel. So the first product is the Nagoya NA771. This is a flexible antenna for your handheld radio. I've got one right here that you can see. Um, it's around about, or oh, probably about a foot long. Uh, you can uh, get them with an SMA connector there on the bottom or you can, I think, get them in BNC as well. These are meant to replace the little stock stubby antenna that comes with like the Baofeng radios to improve your reception. So these are also transmitting antennas. They'll transmit on two meters and 440 on 70 centimeters. Uh, they can be used for wider reception as well. They're not too bad, but they're much better than those stock antennas. So these are sitting here for about $11 or so. 11 bucks is a good little upgrade for your um, for your radio. So these are great little uh, antennas and these are the legit Nagoya ones as well. Now, next up is this little LNA. Now I featured this preamplifier a few videos ago when I was talking about SDRs and improving your setup with your SDRs at home. So I actually run this on uh, six meters at the moment. I've been experimenting on a couple of other bands as well. But this is a great little LNA uh, for $13. Um, it's pretty pretty simple to, to sort of set up. I think there's one version that comes with a battery um, and a version without a battery as well. I've got the version without the battery because I don't really need that. Um, but basically what you're using this for is to um, use as a ultra low noise amplifier. Now it's got 20 dB of gain and it uh, has... Um, a frequency range of 100 kilohertz to 6 gigahertz. Now, I'm not too worried about the, the gain. Uh, it's more the noise figure. Now, the noise figure at 1.95 gigahertz is 0.4 of a dB. That's not too bad. It starts to increase a little bit as you go down in frequency. But the thing that I like about this little um, amplifier, and it works really well, I've been using it on 6, um, is that it's reasonably cheap. You can buy a couple of these, and if you end up popping one or blowing one up, then it's easy to swap out. And I've done a whole uh, series or spoke about this again on my previous videos. I'll put a link up the top to uh, the SDR series of videos if you want to go back and watch those about using an LNA and how it is advantageous in your receive setup, especially if you're using an SDR to run with one of these. But these are $13 uh, for these LNAs. Now this is a battery tester, 150 watts, 20 amps. Uh, I've done a review video on this a few weeks back about testing some LiPo4 batteries and also some seal lead acid batteries. This is a great way to do it. You can connect this up to a PC with the software or Bluetooth, but I was just using the screen here on the front. These are um, great for being able to test the capacity of your batteries to see if they're actually still any good. You can also um, do other various tests as well using the adapter. So they've got a little USB-C and other USB adapters here, DC plug as well. So you can connect those in and do your tests on like your power banks and all that sort of stuff. Um, so they come in a few different options and models that you can read about. But um, essentially the standard model is about $30. Now these are these are um, great. I was testing all of my um, uh, LiPo4 batteries. So I found out that a couple of my batteries had reduced capacity significantly. So I was uh, using a little 7 amp hour um, LiPo4 battery and it just kept going flat on me and I couldn't understand what was going on. So I did a capacity test um, using one of these for a couple of hours and it ended up it was like half capacity. It was like three and a half amp hours um, capacity instead. So the battery was stuffed basically. So uh, it's great to be able to use this to be able to test those out. Now I like dabbling in microwaves a little bit and one of those things is that they're always using connectors like SMA. So I don't have a whole heap of SMA connectors. So I go to AliExpress to get some of these adapters to be able to adapt between reverse polarity, normal SMA, SMA barrels, all these sort of things, and they're reasonably cheap too. 
you know, they're, they're good for um, just little projects. I've used these in my microwave projects when I've been building my transverter systems because um, a couple of the antennas on uh, the dishes that we use use like reverse polarity SMA. So then I need to adapt it to regular SMA. So uh, you can go to AliExpress and you can see these. They're super cheap. Um, SMA is really good to have. You can get these, I think, too, if you have a look for... BNC adapters, for instance sake, you can go and get those and they've also got various ones of differing qualities as well. Um, here's a, a couple there and I think you can also get these in packs too. So uh, they're also uh, handy to have in your box if you don't have um, a, a large assortment of adapters. I actually use a fisherman's um, uh, I was going to say fisherman's basket, a fisherman's box with all of the tackle box to put uh, that they usually put their uh, lures in and stuff like that. I actually use those and I, I mount all of the, uh, put all of my parts in for my RF connectors in those and then it makes it easy to find those. So um, yeah, grab yourself some adapters uh, from AliExpress, uh, pretty cheap. I wouldn't use these for precision things, but for just the, you know, connecting up and doing testing and all that sort of stuff. At amateur radio, most of these things are reasonably um, good enough quality. Whip antennas, uh, spike, ground spike antennas, all those sort of things. I like the Mad Dog coils from uh, Marty VK4KC. He may, uh, does a great job in building these. Now, one of the things that uh, you can mount on top of these coils is a stainless steel whip. So this whip goes up to 5.28 meters, collapses down to 52 centimeters. So uh, 20 to 200 inches, that's an M10 thread. Um, so you can, this is telescopic, so you can undo these um, out to their full length and tune them up onto the bands that you want. So uh, this one, I think this is the one that I use on my Mad Dog Call, $34 for this. Um, and it's great because I can get, um, get uh, on the bands uh, portable operating very easily. Um, set it up on the tripod, put the whip up, put a couple of uh, ground radials out and we're on the air and working. So um, good, cheap option. They are a little bit flimsy on the end, so you do have to be careful that if you whip it into a tree, you might break the end of it. The base of it is pretty good, um, but yeah, just keep that in mind that don't go hitting anything with them because they are a little bit uh, flimsy in some regards at the end. However, uh, for $34, you can always order a spare one if you want, if, if you end up breaking it. Next up is the Tiny SA Ultra. Now I've featured this in uh, quite a few videos. Here's mine in my little pack here. This uh, allows me to be able to measure spurious emissions of radios. I can also see if there's any RF noise in the area. Uh, it's also got a receiver in it, so you can plug it into a speaker and listen off air. There's all sorts of different things that you can do with the Tiny SA. I've done quite a few videos, so have a look on my channel if you want to see more information about it. They're about $150 here, $143 here for um, 100 kilohertz to 5.3 gigahertz. That's the other good thing is that it goes up into that high gigahertz range. Um, so the Tiny SA is a great little piece of test equipment that everyone should have in, in their ham radio shack. Um, if you don't have um, a spectrum analyzer, that's essentially what this is. It's a small little spectrum analyzer. It also has an RF generator in it as well. Um, you can connect this up to the PC so you can actually graph a lot uh, on a lot larger screen. Um, this has a four inch screen, this particular ultra model. Um, you can get the smaller models as well, which I think are also on AliExpress. Here we go for $45. Um, this is not the ultra models, I don't think. No, this is the previous ultra model. So even cheaper, so $70 for that one. Uh, the other one's an upgraded one. So uh, these are great if you wanna, um, uh, there we go, the difference is yeah, 2.8 inch uh, screen and then um, which is not the ultra 100 kilohertz to 960 megahertz and then the upgraded ultra 4 inch which goes from 100 kilohertz up to 5.3 gigs so great piece of test equipment to have and to go along with the tiny sa for an attenuator to be able to um, measure like spurious emissions from handheld radios without blowing the front of the tiny sa up then you can get one of these little um, attenuators they come in various different levels i recommend the 40 db level because 40 db is 10 watts um, and if you're measuring five watts out of your handheld then you're going to be safe these are uh, 26 dollars um, so they'll handle the power um, they'll connect directly straight into your tiny SA and uh, they yeah they come in different attenuation levels as well so this is the one that I use and it works really well for being able to measure those things
Now, whilst we're on the topic of test equipment, the Nano VNA is the next thing that should be in every ham shack. So this is a vector network analyzer. Don't let that scare you off if you don't know what that means. But basically, you can do all sorts of measurements with this. There's lots and lots of different videos on um, uh, YouTube and also information on the internet on how to use one of these to be able to measure antennas and complex impedances and all sorts of things, cables, coaxes. I use this for measuring SWR, something as simple as SWR and return loss. Um, my model that I've got is actually this one, which is the Nano VNA SAA2N, uh, and it comes in this little um, case. So this uh, the difference with this one is, is that it comes with the N connectors on the, on the top, and a lot of people ask me about where I actually get this from. Um, so I got this from the CSI uh, AliExpress store there. So $135. I prefer N connectors um, over the uh, the little SMAs. This will do 50 kilohertz to 3 gigahertz, so I can effectively measure antennas over that. Um, I used this recently actually to measure some uh, return loss SWR on an FM broadcast um, station. So um, that was rather interesting, really easy to, to be able to use. So you can do all sorts of things with the VNA. It still blows my mind that you can have all of the stuff that was in one of those big VNA units in pretty much the palm of your hand now. And you can connect again, you can connect this up to uh, the PC as well. And you can take screenshots. Um, there's the link again to the software. Um, it comes with the the two N connector leads, um, all of the calibrations. Now, moving on to radios, I keep banging on about this as probably one of the best cheap handhelds that I've used. This is the TID Radio TDH3. This radio is great. It's easy to program. It's chirp compatible. It comes with a whole bunch of different features. Um, easy to use for the beginner. Uh, you can pair it with an app if you want to. There's all sorts of things that this thing does. USB-C charging as well. That it also comes in black um, crystal, which is kind of cool because you can see through the electronics in the case, or you can also get green um, as well. And I've done reviews on the TDH3 on my channel. Uh, great, great radio. Um, so yeah, 30, $38 at the moment, um, at least showing here. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a great, great radio. So I think that, uh, it does do airband as well. The airband on it is a little bit, probably not the best airband radio that I've ever heard. I believe that they have upgraded it a little bit, um, and made it a little bit better. You can also program directly to the radio as well using USB-C. So you actually don't need a different programming cable. You just literally just plug straight in and away you go. Um, so you can, you can program with the programming cable if you've got one. And one of the Baofeng cables will do, or it will also do wireless um, wireless programming, wireless copy as well. So yeah, these are a, a great radio um, for those who are getting started and they want a cheap handheld radio. This is probably the one to get. Now here are a couple of GPS items. This uh, is a GPS antenna that I use. Um, they come in with various different connectors. These are outdoor GPS antennas, so I run um, these on all of my repeater sites. So I've got, uh, G they all require GPS timing. So I need an antenna that's outside. This is the one that I use. So they come with an, uh, you can get them in an SMA, uh, a BNC, TNC, uh, with longer cables, five meter long cable. So there's all sorts of different variations here. Here's one with a BNC that's 10 meters long. They're waterproof, so you can put them outside. Um, the good thing, and I think I've got one, um, on the bottom, of this packet on the bottom of the antenna they've also got a thread if i think you can just see there in the in the uh the image they've just they've got a thread there and that actually fits a standard irrigation fitting that you can get from the hardware here so you can screw in the irrigation fitting and then it, you can mount it directly on top of a metal pipe or pole using the irrigation fitting, which is really good. Or you could just butt it up the side here and just cable tie it on or use a hose clamp or something to just hold it onto your post um, outside. So I use these, yeah, 28 dB antenna. I think they've got an active, they're an active antenna, so they do need um, an active voltage to be able to work. So these are the ones, um, these are the ones that I use and they're really, really good. Now, speaking of GPS units, this is the one that I run here. 
This is the BG7 TBL GPSDO. So this gives you 10 megahertz out. It gives you one pulse per second out. Um, you've also got serial data as well, um, NEMA serial data. There's the GPS antenna to connect into there. Also comes with the power supply. It also comes with this little puck antenna, but I use those outdoor antennas for these. These have been running for years. I've had these running years and years on my um, repeater sites with no problems whatsoever. Um, they are on the more expensive side, but they do come with an OCXO inside. I'm not sure if there's a photo there of the inside, but they do come with a crystal oven um, inside the, the unit um, so that if you do use, lose GPS lock, they do, uh, they do have good um, stability. But uh, the BG7 TBL units are very popular with microwavers for those that have 9700s as well to be able to GPS lock them to those. I also got a bunch of these little SMA connectors or connector leads. These are male to male. I had all of these GPS things that I needed to connect up and I was like, I don't want to have to make up a million leads. So um, you can pre get them pre-made. RG316, this is a five piece uh, set. I think I got these, these are yeah, five piece 30 centimeters and they were $6, $6. I, I can't get the connectors and I can't, make the leads in the time that it would cost for six bucks so i just got a few of those and they come in all sorts of different lengths as well so you can get them um, three feet long you can get them six feet long etc for different prices obviously so um, smas you can also get these from sma male to sma female all sorts of different uh, connector types now i've been converting everything over to power poles here in the shack i've got a few options for distribution but the WinCamp um, AP8 is a great option for being able to use as a power splitter to keep everything nice and neat um, and tidy. Uh, I just I hate running power leads everywhere and having them all over the place. This gives you a nice, neat solution. So this is an eight-way splitter up to 40 amps um, on this, and you can see there that there's all sorts of different fuse um, sizes, but 40 amps total through this. So then that way you can run a couple of your radios, um, you know, run a couple of different power distribution blocks um, in the shack. So uh, these are these are great uh, things to be able to do that with. So uh, there's also two versions. There's the uh, version here without the little um, mounting tabs here on the side, uh, but I'd probably recommend you just get the mounting tabs because one, it's a dollar cheaper than the one that's without. So um, power poles, you can, uh, Get them also from AliExpress. I have been told that you need to be careful with the versions of power poles that you do get, but um, I've got some from Ali before and I'll put a link below to the ones that I've used. I've not really had any problems with the ones that I've used before as far as um, compatibility. Now I used to own an FT817. Uh, this is also applicable to the FT818. And one of the most frustrating things was that little DC jack on the back of the 817 or 818. It used to frustrate the heck out of me. And one of the things that I got for it was one of these. This is the ADP-1, a WinCamp product again, and it's got power poles on the side. So basically this is a little, uh, where's the photo here? A little um, adapter, which basically plugs the DC jack into the back of the radio and it's secured with the ground lug that is on the back um, of the FT817. You can see there's the screw there. And basically what this does is it converts that little DC jack to a power pole on the back, which is much easier to run than the little uh, making up a whole bunch of leads and stuff for the uh, for the 817s. Now I wanted a couple of spare power leads as well for my ICOM radios as well using the little four pin um, version of power leads that they use. I think these are applicable to the uh, 7300, the 7610, the 90, the 9700. So they all use these plus a few um, other radios as well. So for $6, I got myself a couple of these little leads, made up some, um, you know, for my go boxes, for when I'm going portable, for um, here in the shack. And then that way I've always got a couple of leads on hand. To be able to get that connector and to be able to put all of that together, including the fuses would just be exceeding exceeding the six dollars that it takes to have one already pre-made up now there are of course plenty of other ham radio deals lots and lots of handhelds lots and lots of radios here on aliexpress um, all sorts of different things i haven't 
begin to touch on what is available on AliExpress. I hope this video was helpful. I've done a couple of other videos on AliExpress products and also the things that I've bought. Then you can view those over here on the screen right now.